How's it going everybody? I kind of halfway put back together the saw shop because I got an interesting question via email and I thought, you know what? I'm going to make a video on that today. Welcome back everybody. So glad you guys have been enjoying the truck content on my 96 Power Stroke F250. Um, I'll do a video for you guys on that coming up. People have been asking about the exhaust. I got some updates to do. Also, um, I have that coolant leak at the thermostat. I ordered a Motocraft thermostat. We'll be doing that. And uh, I got a couple of other little projects to do around here. But in the meantime, let's get back to some saw work. Today's video, I got, I, I've been asked this probably hundreds, maybe a thousand times, who knows, probably hundreds of times over the last four or five years. The question is, Tin Man, I kind of understand how a piston ported two stroke works. If you don't understand that, go to my cutaway series. Uh, I'll have to put a link right here somewhere. Uh, I have a chainsaw cutaway series where I actually cut a chainsaw in half. Those videos still get tons of views and that's some of my finest work friends. I'm here just to help you guys, maybe help you guys learn or lead you guys to the down the path of working on and maybe modifying your own saws. But really working on them is, is a lot of fun and the pride uh, a fella or a lady can take in maintaining their own stuff. Uh, it feels good and being able to work on stuff is just a good deal. Anyhow, I get asked this question all the time. How, what's a reed engine? How does a reed engine work? I don't understand. What is a reed engine? Well, these three saws, this is a Pioneer P41 Home Light Super Mini. And uh, I believe this is an XL, I'm gonna say it's a 923, 925, 922, that series of saw. And uh, these, all three of these are reed saws. Now, let's see if this thing starts. Is this one of my running home lights? I can't remember, friends. I got all these home lights now. This one here. This is my dad's saw. I'm gonna hang it back up here where it was. Let's see if those, see if that reed home light that I got going in a video not that long ago. Let's see. Let's see if this thing starts. Let's stop hitting the trigger. There we go. Ready? I'm curious. Look at that. It's like a Swiss watch. Give it a little trigger. Oh, friends, I should turn the choke off, shouldn't I? I bet you this thing's flooded now. That's a reed saw. The question is, what is a reed saw? Well, reeds are a different form of uh, intake system. I'm going to call it an intake control device. Now, that's not an actual term. Something that I just came up with right now. Piston porting. And you guys can see it's cold in here, but I am a Canadian feller, so I ain't afraid of a little cold. Piston porting has to do with when the piston skirt clears the intake, okay? When it clears the intake, it pulls vacuum. When the piston's moving up, it creates a vacuum. When that piston clears the bottom of the intake port, that vacuum opens and it pulls fuel through the carburetor. Now, a reed system is completely different. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a visual learner. Let's pull a set of reeds out of this home light carcass. And let's have a look at it. I'm gonna bring you guys into the bench. I'll move these other two saws and uh, let's have a look at a reed system and show you guys what it is, how it works, and the advantages and the disadvantages of it. Let's have a look. Okay, here's your 922, 925, that series of saw. And what you may or may not notice is there's no intake on the cylinder. Here's your exhaust side right here. Notice there's no intake there, which is kind of strange if you're not used to this series or this type of saw. Now, reeds. 
Reeds are just like in a wind instrument. Reeds are a little flat piece of metal and they go like this. They open and close, okay? That controls your induction. Now, these are just my opinions and I'm gonna talk about positives and negatives to reed saws, but um, the nice thing about these home lights is these are direct case fed, okay? And I'm gonna take this all apart and show you guys because I'm a visual learner. I like to see how things work. Some reeds will go into what appears to be an intake and there'll be windows in the piston, okay? You'll have like, you'll have like a, a hole machined in what would normally be the intake side of the piston, okay? And then once that opens, your suction comes through the window of the piston. But in this case, this goes right into the case. Now, I like that system. Um, it's simple. It's simple. It's easy to work on and you put your fuel and air right into the case. It doesn't have to go around the crankshaft or anything like that. You know, down around the piston, it goes right into the case and right to where you want it. Now, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to undo these bolts. I need to warranty. I've been saying this to myself forever. I need to, I bought this screwdriver 20 I don't know, 25 years ago, probably. Like, I was probably still in high school. It was like a big deal to get one of these clicky snap-on screwdrivers. You guys can see it's... Uh, I dropped it on a grinder one time. But this thing is just... This thing's just plain worn out. I need to warranty it. I will one of these days. I keep saying that. I've been saying that for about 10 years. Okay, there's three screws... This is typical home light, like they all are set up like this. Pretty much you work on one home light, you've worked on all of them. They're all pretty much the same. Okay, this is are called a reed block, okay? Or sorry, friends, this is your intake, intake block. Okay, here's your impulse hole. Your impulse hole is fed by pressure and suction. That's what makes your carburetor pump as the piston goes down, that pushes pressure into the bottom end right and that'll push through your impulse line and then as your piston goes up under suction it'll suck through your impulse line that's what makes your fuel pump through your carburetor okay reeds now i'm gonna gently and again this is an old carcass oh i lost some reeds didn't i friends yes because this didn't come out with it oh well I don't even know, friends, if, yeah, I definitely lost a reed inside the case, and that's okay. There we go. There you go, friends. I'm not even going to edit that out. Now, that does happen with these, um, especially if the rubber is worn. You can end up losing reeds when you pull this block off. Don't freak out if that happens. You guys see there, I just dumped it. Okay. So, this is your typical home light reed block. It's a pyramid shape. You have four reeds. These are reeds right here, okay? Now, all a reed does, think about it. When the piston's going up, it's like a syringe. It's pulling suction from the bottom of the case, right? That's why you don't want air leaks. It has to be a sealed system so that you pull a vacuum in the case. When that vacuum gets to the right amount, the reeds open. Okay. Okay, so the piston's going up, the reeds open. The minute that piston starts going down and you start making case pressure, the reeds close. Okay. That is the benefit of a reed. And you might ask yourself, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, a reed saw, the reason why I like porting reed saws is there's a couple things I can do with them. Number one, intake timing is irrelevant. Intake timing is roughly 180 degrees, which is way longer. You pretty much, most piston ported saws, you start getting, you know, high 160s, 170, they'll start spitting back through the intake. And the reason for that is, you're overfilling the case, and when the piston starts coming down, 
right? And when the piston starts coming down, you have too much fuel and air in the case and it'll spit back through the carburetor. So you're really limited on intake timing on a piston ported saw, but on a reed saw, if the piston's going up, once it starts building suction on the way up, the reeds will start to open. Once it starts moving down, the reeds will close. Now, when I say 180 degrees, that's not reality, friends. Remember, that piston has to move up a certain amount of degrees to get suction going in the case. Once that suction happens and creates a vacuum, you'll open your reeds. Okay? Now, the beauty of that is you can tune your reeds. Um, I am not a reed tuning expert. I have played with reeds. Um, you can thin them. If you thin the reed, it'll open a little sooner. But if you make it too thin, it'll open too far and it could start to flutter. And so this is like, this is art and science, but um, you can also play with different thicknesses. You can put one thin reed. Um, one of the hot ticket items for like the, the uh, pioneers is you can get a two-stage reed, meaning there's a section of the reed that's a small section and it's thin that section starts to open right away and that gives you nice hit, a uh, nice throttle response. These I kind of like because you can tune one reed if you got a stack of them, which I do, you could thin one reed, put it all back together and see. Okay, so this is a reed system. Some saws have one reed, some saws have two reeds, some saws have four. The only one I'm aware of that has four, and I could be wrong, is the home light. Okay, this is, this is a, a home light thing. Every home light I've pulled apart pretty much, you know, the modern stuff, 60s, 70s, 80s, has this system in it. Okay, so that's how a reed works. When the piston goes up, once it gets suction, it'll start to pull the reed open. Okay, it'll do that. And again, this is on a microscopic level, but the reed will go, okay. Now, what is the drawback of a reed? Well, complexity. There's a lot of extra parts in here. There's a rubber gasket in here. There's another gasket in between the intake block and the reed. All places for it to leak. But let's say all that stuff's good. What's the other drawback to this? Well, they wear. Now, you guys look. I'll show you guys. If you have a reed saw and... Okay, if you have a reed saw and your cranks, your crank seals are good and your your impulse line or your, you know, everything's good on it, but it's a hard starter. Often what I've found is you have a reed. Can you guys see that? This reed is worn. Not overly worn. It's not chipped. These will chip, but it's got some wear on it. This saw's been run. It's an old home light. It's probably got a million hours on it. Now, what could happen is, I might be able to show you guys this. It looks good here. What I usually do with these, if I think I have a reed problem, I'll take this rubber gasket out of here, which is stuck in this saw. I'm not going to disturb it. Those are getting hard to find. But I'll put the rubber gasket over it, and I'll shine a light up to it, and I'll look for any air or any light around the edges of it. Okay? If these don't sit flat and they don't seal against this reed block, if they hover open, you don't get intake vacuum. And then you don't get fuel and they'll be hard to start. Now, sometimes they will start, but they'll be really hard to start. Sometimes all you need to do, and I, I've done this, is you got dirt in here. If you have a bad air filter, you'll get some dirt in here. And you guys can see there is some on this saw. Clean that off, put it back together. If not, sometimes you can take a, a flat block and you can sand this or flip your reed upside down. I've done that many times. Again, these reeds are in great shape. I'm probably going to put this carcass back together because um, reeds are getting hard to find. I also, I've used reeds from different models. I noticed the, I could tell you what saw this is if I mic'd these reeds because I know how thick the reeds are on the bigger saws. Um, I've used smaller reeds off like a 60cc home light on a bigger home light to try and give it more hit. And uh, the... They do fit with a little bit of uh, modification. Sorry, I dropped one on the floor. But uh, that's the deal there. 
So anyhow, that's a reed. That's your reed system. There could be one, two, three, four. And all this does is controls your flow through your intake, okay? And again, now that I've played with these a little bit, they're falling out, but you guys get the general idea. That's a reed, that's how they work. And uh, you can make a lot of power with a reed saw because you can always get maximum amount of fuel and air into the motor and it will not spit back, it shouldn't. The drawback to that is though, is when you're tuning them, they can flutter. Oh, okay, I'll just throw that back together like that. Okay, the drawback is when you're tuning these, they can break. If they open too far or curl, they can break, they can flutter. So it's one of those things. There's a lot of old boys out there that know how to tune a reed. And uh, if you have access to one of those guys, uh, soak it up because it's getting the days of that kind of knowledge, that old school mechanical knowledge, you know, these, the old guys are fading away and they don't, they didn't buy parts. They made them. And I think built horsepower is always better than bought horsepower, but that's just me. Anyhow, friends, that's a reed saw. I hope you guys learned something here. And, uh, this is the good stuff. I love showing people how things work. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Keep sending those questions through the emails and I think I'm going to do a questions of the day video again and just get caught up with you guys. Uh, I get more questions of the day than I can put in videos. So um, I like doing the catch up videos. I might make those a regular on the channel and uh, keep the questions coming. No question should not be asked because I think questions are valid. There's no, there's no silly questions. There's only silly answers, right? So don't be afraid to ask a question in the comments. There's so many good people here and there's a lot of people here that you know, know more than I do, and they're always happy to share their knowledge. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later.